Hi everybody, welcome back to Loon Dev's YouTube channel. You've seen a lot of banners with effects like this or similar. This is a not too complicated brand, consisting of three main components, the background. The text and highlight are these images. The special thing is that these images will look like the background itself, creating the feeling that our text is weaving into the leaves. This is an effect that is both easy and difficult. It's difficult because normally to create this effect you must have quality and well-separated images. It's easy because if we already have an image database, we can only code a few lines. But don't worry. In today's video, I will help you create this effect with any normal image you want. So don't miss this video and subscribe to my support channel. Now let's begin. The first thing is to find quality photos that can be used for this project. Please visit here and select the keyword you want to search for. This website provides us with a lot of diverse and high quality images. Here, please choose any photo you like to download. I will choose it, because it has light and dark spots interwoven, creating a feeling of dimensional image. Very suitable for this project. Remember, you can choose any other photo, it doesn't have to be the same as yours. Then we will all be able to do this project easily. Now is the time for coding. Currently for this project I have a photo that I just uploaded. One HTML file. One CSS file, and I haven't written anything yet. In the index, I set up according to HTML5. Embed the CSS file path in the head section so it is loaded first. For the body, I will create a simple header, because we will save time so we can get to the banner design part as quickly as possible. So comes the banner class. The banner will contain a content class to display content and a button. And that's all the content for the HTML, very concise, right? Go to CSS. With body. I gave the background black, text white and font family poppins. With header. I created a bottom line to distinguish it from the bottom border. Height is 70px. Remember this number. To align the content inside, I use display flex. Justify content space between to push content to both sides. Align item center to align text horizontally. Padding left and right is 100 pixels. For class banner. I will use the background as the image I just selected at the beginning of the video using the background image property. With the width of this component being 100%. And the height is 100vh. 100 VH will be equal to 100% of the screen frame. Now I want this banner to be at the top of the page, so pay attention. When bouncing our header has a height of 70 pixels. So now I just need to drag this banner class to exactly 70 pixels and it will be located somewhere on the page. And why is there still a black space on the website like this? Then it is due to the default margin value of the body. To remove it, just set the body's margin to zero. To align background image information. Use background repeat to prevent images from repeating. Use background position to specify its position within the element. And background size adjusts its size to fit the screen. To align the position of content inside. I use display. Flex again.
with justify content, center to center the content horizontally, and align item, center to center the content vertically, with class content inside the banner. By default I use a font size of 12 pixels. Remember it because a little later we will have many interesting things for it in design and responsiveness. Text transform. Uppercase to capitalize content. Div contains the first content. I provide font size, 3M. This means it will be equal to his father's font size of 12px by 3. Div contains the second content. I provide font size, 20m. This means it will be the size of his father's font which is 12px by 20. This template is not beautiful and not suitable for this project. So I will visit the Google font website to find another font that I like. After finding the font, choose the letter thickness you want. Then click import to copy this content and paste it at the beginning of the CSS file. Now, I will paste font family where I want to use this font. Next is the button. I will give it a border. Make the background color transparent so the background image behind can be seen. White letters. Padding and letter sapsing. 5 pixels to create space for letters. To align this button to the middle. Then the third div is the div containing it. Use text align. Center. I will change the color of the second content so it has a bit of white combined with light blue to match the background better. Now I will test how responsive it is. As you can see, when the page is zoomed out, the web page crashes because the size of the leaves text is too large. Then we will proceed to fix it immediately. When users access the page, regardless of screen size, then its default font will be 12 pixels. However, with smaller screens like laptops, then I will shrink it to 9 pixels. At this time, the units related to you inside the class banner will also be changed. If initially 3 meters was 12 times 3, now it is only 9 times 3. We'll continue testing with smaller screens. Now it's the iPad. Similar to what we did with the laptop screen. So our job on the iPad screen is just to shrink the font size. Nine hundred ninety two pixels would be the limit of the iPad screen. Everyone should note that when doing responsive media and max width, we must write in the correct order big screen first, small screen next. The same will be done for phone screens with a max width limit of six hundred seventy eight pixels. So we have completed the responsive process. Now we need to create images with the iron cut out from the background. I selected the leaves in the area covered by the text to process. I will use Photoshop for this, don't worry. We will make it very simple in two minutes that even a first time Photoshop user can do. I opened Photoshop and selected the background image as it appeared.
then I choose this tool. And proceed to trace it to the position I want to cut. Don't try too hard to look beautiful. We don't need it, let's keep it simple without being too elaborate. After drawing, press Ctrl C and Ctrl V to separate it into a separate layer. So it's one picture. Next is the remaining image. Note that you must place the mouse on the layer containing the original image to cut it. After cutting, I will also use the key combination Ctrl C and Ctrl V to separate the layer. Now I will use the eraser to erase these black spots. So it's a song. Now I will save it as PNG. So we have prepared two images, similarly when people choose another image they can also rely on this way. Now let's proceed with the code. The current default background is in the banner class. So now right at the banner we will create an after element. The after component will be generated and will be located inside the banner class. For an after to be displayed, it must have a content attribute declared. To make sure it has size and always overlaps the main background. So in the banner class, I have declared an attribute position, relative. It will have the position, absolute attribute. At this point we will be allowed to use inset. O, 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 O. That means it will have a distance of 0, 0, 0, 0 from the top right bottom left of the banner class. I will insert the cropped image here. With Z index to ensure it overlaps other elements. It's hard to see it. So I temporarily added a red background to make it easier to see. And this is it. Because it looks too similar to the background behind so it's hard to see. Now. To ensure this cropped image is always in the same position as the background behind no matter how the screen size changes. Then you should use the background properties of the banner to use for it. When its properties are the same, no matter what changes. It will also change together. It works fine. However here it will cause an error. That is, we cannot now hover over the content behind the half. Because it has been overridden by the after component. We will not be able to manipulate the content if we leave it like that. To help users click on the content. Use the pointer events. None attribute on, after, itself. This attribute prevents users from manipulating it. Instead, it will operate on the content behind. Notice that our header has disappeared because it was covered by the banner class. So in the header we will use z-index to overlap other elements. But if you want to use z-index, it must be accompanied by a position, relative attribute. Final. We will test whether responsive screens really work well when adding, after. So it's been working fine. This is the entire video content of today. If you find it interesting, don't forget to subscribe to my support channel. Thank you very much. See you again in the next video.